Good morning, everyone. Very good to welcome you to worship here this morning, or if you're watching on the live stream or on the recording, it's good to have you with us. Happy New Year to you all. The last vestiges of Christmas are around the church. We're something like day eight of Christmas, the eighth day of Christmas. Traditionally, on the twelfth day, Christmas trees come down, decorations are cleared. And that twelfth day is the traditional date of the arrival of the Magi, the wisdom seekers, the astrologers from the east to Bethlehem. That's referred to as the Epiphany. It's the fancy name for a revealing, a seeing, a glimpsing of the presence of God. And although the trees will come down and the decorations will come down, the church, in a sense, is permanently in the business of glimpsing. It's wanting to perceive what God is about in Jesus. And almost to the brink of Lent, on Sundays in the lectionary readings, it will be about glimpsing, about the revealing of who Jesus is. But for today, we focus on these travellers from the East. Let's begin with the hymn, O Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness. You're welcome to stand or sit as you're most comfortable, but wearing a mask. going to pray together, gathering, collecting our thoughts as our hearts and minds will ponder the wise man in the remainder of the service. Just a moment or two to read the prayer through and then we'll share together. Let us pray together. Eternal God, By a star, you led wise men to the worship of your Son. Guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may see your glory. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And from Matthew's Gospel, the first 12 verses of the second chapter, the arrival of these travellers. The picture, in case you're not sure, of the new arrivals into our nativity, knitted nativity set, the three magi on the table here at the front. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When Herod had called together all the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go, make careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on the way. And the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another way. We sing the carol brightest and best of the sons of the morning. <coughs>
meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our rescuer. Amen. One Christmas Eve, a good many years ago, at the church where I was the minister, there had been a plan to try something new. On top of the usual Christingle and the recounting of the biblical story, children, young people, adults were dressed in the scenes, in the figures, the characters of the nativity. And where appropriate and where there was the resource, there were poems or songs sung or recited by those taking part. I have a particularly vivid memory of the procession of the three kings. A lengthy version of We Three Kings of Orient are weaving up and down and back and forward the aisles to give time and space for soloists, the three kings, to sing their individual verses and the congregation to join in the chorus. And coming afresh to look at the passage in Matthew 2, I realised how carols, hymns and songs influence the text or influence our perception of what the text is saying. Here were these eloquent, singing, wise men. And that amount of activity filled my sense as I came to the text. So it was a bit of a shock when I realised that in Matthew's Gospel they only speak once. And they speak in a sort of harmony. They say they have seen the sign of a child born to be king. Where is he? And that's it. If you're going to call them wise, you don't have a lot of evidence to go on, far less than the hymn verses that they sang all those years ago. There's almost a sense of them in Matthew's Gospel being people who have long been buried in books and in the night shift watching the stars. And although they're educated and eloquent, they are well, to put it generously, they are reserved. They don't give dramatically of themselves in words, but they do in action. Long years of silent, silent stargazing them have fused together astronomy and astrology. And that's why the phrase the magi, from which we get the word magic, with all its ambiguity in terms of a life of faith, brings them together. It struck me there is a danger in calling them wise. Is he, is she wise? Are they clever? Did they go to uni? What exam results did they have? Are they clever? It's a temptation to think these wise magi have got it all sorted. But I suddenly realised the Magi have unconscious bias. You know the fact that we can behave to people of a certain gender or sexuality or nationality and we make certain assumptions about what they will eat or where they will have lived or what will interest them. The kings, the magi, these wise people had travelled for weeks, even on the generous 12-day version. They've been on the road for a long time. And they followed a star. They've travelled at night. They've watched the star. It's moved. They have moved night by night, day by day of sleep, night by night. And yet... No sooner do they cross the border into Judea than their brain switches off. If they're looking for a king, oh yes, there's a star, look, it's still moving. Yes, but there's a royal palace here. Why don't we go in and see where the king is? That'll be much quicker. There is a profound unconscious bias that a king will be born in a palace. And by succumbing to unconscious bias, they stir up a hornet's nest. And it's that or worse that unconscious bias can do. 
Jerusalem, which had manoeuvred its way to a very delicate but rewarding balance with the Roman Empire, had been treading a careful path, and Herod, who himself was really a Jewish outsider, had managed to balance Rome and Judaism. A new king would not only pull the rug under his benefit, but everyone who depended on him. Herod calls all of his advisors. Where is this king to be born? What can you tell us? And yet there's a hint in the way he asks it that you tell me carefully, you tell me helpfully, so that I can watch my back, protect my path, and look after my vested interests. But just as the supposedly wise men succumb to unconscious bias, the men, I guess it was all men, who had studied the scriptures for so many years cannot simply succumb to Herod's political expediency. They say what the scriptures have said. I wonder how many weeks or months or years you have sat on church pews and seats. How many sermons or Bible presentations you have listened to? Like the, what, the astrologers, the magi watching the stars, and yet we would say it is the true light of God that we have been reading. Do we underestimate how much that steady keeping and listening and trying to fit to God's way will change how we behave? That when we are in a place where others are being unkind or cruel or selfish, we find ourselves unable to simply go along with them because the light of God burns, albeit might be struggling or challenging us how we live it, to go forward. Unconscious bias threatens to wreck the kings. A life of faith finds the advisers even though Herod wants them to help him above anything else. We face a challenge on the way we live. Do we go with instinct and society around us or do we find a truth to follow? The kings set out again silently. No record of what they said under their breath or out loud as they left Herod's palace. Silently, once again, they set out on their quest and they come to the stable. It concludes with joy and worship and generosity. On the brink of heading back to Jerusalem to keep a promise to Herod, they seem to be honest people, a dream warns the kings off and they go home another way. Just as some of the translations do not help us by talking about wise men, so some don't help us as how the kings go back home. They took another route, say some translations, a bit like I try and do on the A27 without much success. In the Acts of the Apostles, the earliest name for the Christian community was followers of the way. And Matthew, who is no fool, says the wise men went home another way. It's exactly the same phrase. As if to say they have got a hint, a glimpse of the way of Jesus. And take that, albeit that it's a different, longer, more tricky road, because it's the way that leads to life. I think Matthew would have us do a little more than a bit of map reading. At the beginning of this new year, on the brink of next week renewing our covenant with God, of asking ourselves, what way do we travel? 
Are we open to the prompting of God's grace? Are we open to him bringing to fruit the years and the patience and the praying and the waiting that have shaped and framed our faith? These magi, these mix of science and superstition, did not understand everything, but they were open to what they were offered. They overcame something of their bias. They found a new presence with God and were offered a new home. We're not so very different. What is going to lead us through to the truth of life and not just to the end of a pandemic? What does it mean for us in all our variety as varied as the magi as we're offered them in these eloquent knitted figures, what way will we take? What path will we follow? Amen. Let us be still together. We're going to pray for the world in which we live. Let us pray. Let us pray for the nations of the world. For the enormous variety of political and social and environmental backgrounds of those nations. Huge variations of culture. Let us pray that the nations may be open to the truth and the generosity and the wisdom of each other. Let us pray for the sharing of truth between the nations. That in political and economic and in social life, The nations may not succumb to selfishness or greed or ambition. Let us pray that the world may find ways to cooperate together in the midst of the global pandemic. Let us pray that the truth of research and medical understanding and of mutual generosity in and between nations may lead to the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own nation. Let us pray that the turmoil of the pandemic may give us the courage to live with new openness with and for each other. Let us live without illusion of our bias with regard to race and gender and sexuality and religion. As the Magi, the outsiders, came to Jerusalem, may it be their treasure and not the disturbance they caused that help us find a way.
free our nation from narrowness of vision, from selfishness, from greed. May the inverted kingship of Christ in the stable help us find the truth of how we should live together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who carry burdens of mind or body or spirit. We pray for the thousands and thousands of people who are experiencing COVID. We thank you for the wisdom and skill of our medical services who care for those in hospital. But we pray for wisdom and mutual care as anyone being ill disrupts family and society and workplace and community. Open our eyes, Father God, and our hearts to mutual care and compassion. And we pray for those who carry long months of COVID, the burden of hospital waiting lists, and the grief of bereavement. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the life of the church throughout the world. Let us give thanks for those women and men who give their lives to the study and reflection of the scriptures. Let us pray for Christian communities that we know in this country and overseas. Praying that God's light and truth may grow and enrich their experience. Let us pray for the life of this church family for our relationship with churches of other traditions and other Methodist churches in the area. Father God, we set out on the road together and in your name, but much is unknown. Deliver us from excessive fear of changes. Fill us with hope. Help us to trust in your grace. We pray in particular for Rosemary Clark, who will come as minister in this place and as circuit superintendent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves. Father God, the Magi came from their own time and their own place. They wandered in their journey, but you did not abandon them. So we pray, as you have been with us the days, the weeks, the months, the years of our life, so be with us in all that lies ahead. Deliver us from overconfidence. Protect us from despair. Lead us in the way of Jesus, we pray. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. We sing our final carol in the bleak midwinter. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain upon each one of you and all those you love and pray for from this Christmas season and forevermore. Amen.